Hello, everybody, and welcome to beautiful Finger Lakes in upstate New York. We're just outside uh, Watkins Glen, and that means we are at Watkins Glen International. Beautiful area of the world. What is it? Four and a half, five hours drive up from Manhattan and an 11 corner, 3.4 mile circuit that is etched into every driver and team's mind. Uh, not corner numbers here. We've got names. Uh, the inner loop, the outer loop, the heel and the toe of the boot, the chute. And it is an absolute challenge for everybody concerned. Hi, everybody. I'm John Heindorf. Shea Adam is alongside me here in the Global Broadcast booth. It's been a very busy couple of days for the Mazda MX-5 runners. They were out yesterday for their first free practice. They had free practice to first thing this morning and qualifying rather first thing this morning. I will get to the Mazda starting grid in a moment, but we have to talk immediately about the guest driver here this weekend, uh, Canadian, so you love him a bit already, and that's James Hinchcliffe. Yeah, and James Hinchcliffe, a very accomplished driver in his own right, multi-time IndyCar race winner, and of course, Indy 500 pole sitter back in 2016, but this is a brand new sport for James, a brand new learning experience, and Johnny's a quick learner. He qualified very well, and he should race even better. You talked to him yesterday for the Master Socials. He was in a good mood. He's tested here in both wet and dry conditions. And he's in a good team. JTR know exactly what they're doing. They are the championship defending team. Uh, Jared Thomas in this race again. He qualified well too. But teaching James Hinchcliffe. And oh, by the way, they're leading the points for this year's championship. So if you've got one team to pick, it should be JTR. Let's take a look at the Mazda starting grid then for this 45 minute time certain race. It is Gresham Wagner for Spark Performance who nicked pole position right at the very end from Hicks and Motorsports, Celine Roland. Thomas, uh, Jared Thomas, the man who is the JT of JTR Motorsports Engineering in the number 96 car with the yellow rollover hoop. You'll hear me say that a few times. Is in third alongside him is points leader Aaron John Somi join us at Midweek Motorsport on Wednesday from the Global Broadcast Centre here. He knows that he's got to be sensible here and take what's on offer. Yep, but that doesn't mean he's not going to try and sweep the weekend, John, because Aaron Johnson won his first ever race the last time out. He now knows what it takes to win an Itamitsu Mazda MX-5 Cup car race, so he's going to try and replicate that and prove that it wasn't just a one-off. And as far as our season has been concerned, our total margin of victory, 0.679 of a second. So not even one full second. The majority of that, nearly half a second, came at the first round of WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. It's going to be tightly fought until the end. Continuing our Mazda uh, starting grid, Thomas Annunziata, le relatively local. He's from New Jersey. So this, I think, is probably his closest pro track. Hicks and Motorsports on position five. He's got another rookie, Jonathan Nodoff. Uh, his Hicks and Motorsports teammate alongside him, 10 and 55. James Hinchcliffe qualified in seventh position. And he's got Anthony McIntosh alongside him. And uh, most importantly, he was less than a second away than to the pole time. Uh, then in ninth and 10th, it's Jeremy Fletcher for Copeland Motorsport and JTR's Woody Hyman. JTR dominating the top 10 with half of the top 10 position. They practiced here last week or a couple weeks ago. They did testing wet and dry, very confident with their setups in both situations. And the practice that they had drafting with one another, being tucked up right underneath the car ahead, that has given them a big comfort advantage coming into today's race. But it is Gresham Wagner on the pole position with the 10 points. It moves him a little bit closer to third position. But indeed, he is still a bit further back in the championship than he wanted to be 45 minutes on the timer goodly smattering of sports car enthusiasts on what is going to be a huge weekend here at Watkins Glen International 
the feature race on Sundays, the sale and six hours of the Glen. How many of these drivers will be racing in that in years to come? But for now, they've got three quarters of an hour. And the first race of the Inamit 2 Mazda MX-5 Cup presented by BF Goodrich Tyres is go. Pretty clean break down towards the right-hander at turn one. Roland trying to come round the outside in the number 87, the multicolored car. They're still two wide, three wide behind, right across the red and yellow curbs. They're still side by side. This is magnificent. Little golf clap from Sheer Adam as they're still <laughs> side by side coming over the top. This is magnificent stuff. And just easing ahead, Gresham Wagner being pushed by Jared Thomas, who then pops out. That's the that's Thomas and that's Thomas Annunziata who's come through uh, in two, third, fourth, fifth, maybe sixth place. But look at that round the outside into the in, inner loop for the first time. These cars will ride the curbs. They're pretty flat there. What a run for Celine Roland, who's just nipped ahead. But that was half of the three and a half miles near enough lap that we had two by two by two from the grid stop. Brilliant was, stuff. That was such a clean start. I am very very impressed by our drivers for being able to maintain such composure and Celine Roland desperate to get to the front of the pack because 10 bonus points for leading the most lap. The guy who's chasing him in points is Gresham Wagner, who's now chasing him on the racetrack, so he'll want to keep that number five behind him. But Thomas Anunziata, hello, Mr. Rookie, started P5 up to P3 with an identical looking car to Celine Roland because of a crash that happened in practice yesterday, resulting in him needing a new car for the weekend. How do we tell the two apart a lot more pink on the roll cage for Celine Roland. He is also representing the Austin Hatcher Foundation, and he's got a bit of a new livery on the car this weekend. But the good news is, an Inziata is repping it now, too. Absolutely incredible first lap. I mean, I am so impressed with the respect that was shown by all of the drivers. Absolutely remarkable stuff from them all and th this might look like a starter formula it's anything but 1.2 million dollars up for grabs at the end of the season six thousand dollars to the winner and prize money all the way down to 10th in every race of the season two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the champion at the end of the season eighty thousand to third real cash folding money going back into grassroots racing and you're watching it all live and free across the US and the world and this battle from Celine Rolam and Gresham Wagner they're pulling away this is very interesting because there is a little gap back to Thomas Annunziata the best of the rookies yeah. for Hickson Motorsport in third position now think bicycle racing Think Tour de France and the Grand Tour. If you work together, you will pull back the breakaway. And look at that is exactly what's happened. Annunziata has got back onto the rear end of the two leaders. And we, for a moment or two ago, there was, what, five or six cars lengths between them. As they go down into turn six, battle for the lead. This is what's slowing them up. Gresham Wagner goes through, takes the point and will lead this part of the lap. But all of a sudden, from having two drivers and a big gap, we've now got five drivers and a small gap back to the rest of the top ten. Well, then why was Gresham Wagner working so hard with Celine Roland trying to push him away? Because identical cars in front of him and behind him, as it were. He does not want the Hicks and teammates to work together and then to pull away without him. Now Gresham Wagner realizes that Celine Roland has a tail gunner in the form of Thomas and Inziata, and then right behind them, well, it's it's Aaron Johnson and Jared Thomas. And then with them, Anthony McIntosh. So, too, there's a lot of team cars that are grouped very well together. Seventh and eighth further down the field. The car with the gold on it is the number 55. Uh, and that is Jonathan Neudorf. He's the uh, second of the rookies. Great pass for the lead. Slightly downhill here in a turn six downhill braking areas are always difficult and it looks like that corner tightens it doesn't but the wall on the outside and the barrier gets progressively closer to the exit point of the corner very very intimidating and i don't think celine roland got the best exit out of five it looked like he dropped some of his left side tires just 
ever so slightly on the dirt. That opened the door for Gresham Wagner to be able to stick the nose down as we have it in contact further back in the field. Max Apelski and Sam Paley are off in turn one. Both cars look like they'll be able to continue, though. That's terrible news for Sam Paley. And he's in this championship on a race-by-race -race basis, John. Yeah, he's looking to pick up some of that money. Farhan Siddiqui just going through. Justin Brig Brigandi for, respectively, Hickson and Robert Noick are racing, just going through right across the curbs there. The two cars that were very similar. Let's see if we can unpick what happened down at turn one. Uh, oh. Sam Paley was the innocent party there, I would say, Shay. I would agree with that. As I'm afraid he was rather railroaded off the circuit and ushered away. Uh, they have both rejoined at the back of the field. Now, I'm saying that Sam Paley has stopped at the top of the hill. Oh, no. Uh, uh, no, he's, he's moving again. Oh, OK. He's moving again, but not up to speed. That's the red car of those two that we saw. Little break for the lead now. Gresham Wagner just leading out in the number five with the orange hood, the orange bonnet. Then the number 10 is Anunziata. He's the best of the rookies, leading his more experienced teammate, Salim Roland. So he's passed him since the start line. Third place, the 24, Aaron Johnson in the darker colored car, the blue car with the, uh, with the blue uh, wing mirrors on it, or door mirrors, should I say. Behind him is Jared Thomas. Red car with the yellow rollover hoop. Remember, I said we'd be seeing that a lot. Yeah. Still that battle further down the field. Jonathan Neudorf and Jeremy Fletcher battling for second best rookie honours as they come under the Global Broadcast Centre here. Hearing that it's a flat tyre for Hannah Zellers at the back of the field, the number 74 car. Oh, her nightmare weekend continues as Thomas Nunziata takes the advantage through turn one and goes to the lead of the race. Now, Celine Roland pushing him, but immediately behind them, it's Aaron Johnson and Jared Thomas. And all of a sudden, Gresham Wagner goes from first to fifth by the top of the S's. Well, if you think that that's unusual, this is exactly what happens in Eda Mitz and Master <laughs> MX5 Cup presented by BF Goodrich Tires. So Gresham Wagner is leading downhill braking area again lovely maneuver to the right hand side by Annunziata who goes through Wagner then has to just adjust his line a little bit and that pushes him further back down the queue everybody else goes thanks very much we'll squeeze through here's Hannah Zeller into the pit lane with we believe we've heard from the marshals our hard-working corner workers that there may be some damage to that car possibly a flat tire so not sure if that was uh, caused by contact there are some places here if you go across the curbs and come back it can be quite destructive to the inside shoulder of the bf goodridge tire these are tires meant for off-roading, though, John. BF Goodrich, that's, that's where enough. their history comes from. So it doesn't matter if you're on the track with four wheels or if you maybe take a slight excursion off. You can still make up time. Through to second for Celine Roland. Side by side, 24 still in third is the JTR to two drivers club Mazda of Aaron Johnson, the man from San Francisco, the man who financed his racing by... Food deliveries, door to door. Financed his life by doing food deliveries. He was paying the rent by having to do that, let alone his racing. Now he finds himself in the prime seat for $250,000 at the end of the year. And he's proven his worth in this championship. Again, I mentioned, got his first win the last race out. Well, that was a six grand Sunday for him. Yeah, six grand Sunday, very good. It would be six grand Saturday and a six grand Friday for whoever picks up the two wins here. Hickson, Hickson, then JTR Engineering in the shape of Aaron Johnson. Still getting used to Aaron, not running the soul red uh, colours uh, of the car behind, actually. He's come through the scholarship system and without the kind of money that we were talking about from Massey, he freely admitted that he would not be racing. Side by side again, nice big push from Jared Thomas to the blue car, the number 24, that is Janson. Now they're on the inside for the first part of the inner loop, the bus stop. Janson goes wide, he might be able to hold on to if he takes some curb, oh. he does. Through goes his 
team leader as well, team principal, because that's Jared Thomas, Jared and his dad Dave run multiple cars in this championship. Jared using some of his championship money from last year to further strengthen his team and bought a GT4 car, which we've already seen this year at Daytona at the Rolex meeting in Mission Pilot Challenge. So not just taking the money and run, and that is what we tend to see here in the Edemitsu Mazda MX-5, that the drivers don't just take the money and move. This has become a destination rather than a stepping stone style of championship. First and second then for the JTR teammates. Johnson from Thomas, Celine Roland in third, Thomason and Ciata in fourth is still the best of the rookie drivers. Then, good drive through the field from Anthony McIntosh. Yeah, ahead of Gresham Wagner. And then Matthew Dirks right behind him as well. And not too far off the back of them, Jonathan Newdorf and Jeremy Fletcher. So we've got rookies showing up to this party today. Max Zapalski and Sam Paley. That turn one incident is under review. Race control watching or having a look at back at that. Side by side again into turn one. That's another very, very smooth and steady maneuver for Gresham Wagner. Spark performance. Lost a little bit of momentum having lost the lead. Now he's got to pick everybody off, so he starts again. Leaders, bit of bump drafting. They are teammates, remember. Two JTR Motorsport Engineering cars from two Hicksons, from a JTR, from a Spark, from a McCumbie McAleer racing car. Matthew Dirks with the fastest lap of the race last time around, 209.348 on the ragged edge. Gresham was two wheels off the track going down the run into the bus stop for a very long time. And now I think that that is Celine Roland who's gone very wide through the bus stop and has used up a lot of the grass instead of the racing line. It worked for him, though. He hasn't dropped back from the pack. And he didn't hit the wall. That was the key thing. Didn't panic there, Roland. He's dropped way down, though. You didn't hear him screaming from here. Uh, I thought I heard uh, a very faint yelling. So keep an eye on the Bridgestone tyres <laughs> on that car. Yeah, at least two wheels on the, on the grass. How far did he actually take to the green stuff? That's the fastest grass cutter I've seen. <laughs> That's three quarters of the car. Of course, that puts dirt on the tire. It's been exceedingly dry around these parts. So there's actually a bit of, uh, there is a bit of grip to be had there, but the dirt on the tires may have contributed to the problems later on. Well, that was Gresham Wagner, who is now uh, being, his phone is ringing by Tony Kanon as the uh, Tony Kanon grass cutting services. Excellent, at yes, lawn services, yeah. Yep. So now Gresham Wagner will have a job offer on his table. And hello to all of our IndyCar drivers who are tuned into the race as well. I know quite a few of you are diehard fans of this series. And everybody in the paddock is by a screen at the moment <laughs> yes. here at Watkins Glen International with still more than half an hour to go. The incident at Turn 1 between Max Opalski and Sam Pearley, that will be reviewed, but post-race. This is lap two. We are starting lap three that Aaron Johnson has led. He's now led to. Why is that important? There's 10 bonus points for leading the most laps in the race. 10 bonus points for the fastest lap of the race as well. That right now goes the way of Robert Noaker, but one Mr. James Hinchcliffe is not far off that lap time. Oh, yeah. He's the second fastest car in the race so far today. But, I, and it, it sounds like nothing at all. Oh, 10 bonus points. It's but massive. Last year, championship position share were decided by 10, 15, 20 bonus points. So, and in fact, when we looked at the breakdown at the end of the season at Matul Petit Le Mans at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta, we looked at people who had done well in those bonus points categories, and they had made up significant positions at the end of the season, which meant a bigger check. The driver who finished second in the championship without the bonus points would have finished probably fifth, I think it was, by the number of bonus points that he'd accrued. It vaulted him up to second in the championship. And the championship last year was decided, by and large, by one position on the racetrack. 
that's what made the difference for Jared Thomas, becoming even more of a team owner as he is this year, even more of a powerhouse, and having cars that are able to lead and win races. Matthew Dirks having a look at Anthony McIntosh in the battle for fifth and sixth, further back, the number 13. Robert Noaker going inside on the, the inside top ten. of uh, Thomas, uh, no, not Thomas Nunziata, that was Jonathan Newdorf for position. This is all inside the top ten, side by side, these masters. Uh, oh, and there's a big off, and that's, oh Gresham. my goodness, it's Gresham Wagner from third. Wow! He went off at the exit in nine, nine, John. Full course yellow is out. He hit hard on the right side of the car and has now come to rest against the guardrail. Driver's right with his driver's side door. That was a big impact for our champion from two years ago. Now, the car is damaged. That'll be some work to do. For Spark performance. For Sparks, yeah. We wait to see. The driver hasn't got out of the car. Don't read anything into that because he is far safer sitting surrounded by the FIA roll cage. Uh, these might look like starter race cars. They are full race cars and safety is never compromised. Already our AMR safety team here at IMSA is there. And talking to Gresham Wagner. Just under 30 minutes to go. Our Porsche Cayenne incident vehicle also getting on the field. Justin Brigandi coming through is the last car in the field. So he's come through. Now, he was, oh, he's just, it's on his own. Oh, no. He's just, he's absolutely misjudged it. He was trying to get the good run on Jared Thomas. And he just drifted out wide. I, he, <laughs> There is barely a car's width between the edge of the track. He was right under the back of Jared Thomas into the tires, brushed the tires, but the tires, they tend to grab the car and pull it around because they're meant to dissipate the energy. And that's exactly what those banded tires did there. The car has taken uh, a big shunt on the right front and then it was spun around the good news is that i can see gresham out of the car and he's already in fact he's able on his own to take off his helmet and his balaclava his body language is one of frustration rather than hurt he'll have some bruises from the full safety harness you don't notice that at the time the adrenaline is still pumping but if Spark Performance can get that car back, I'll guarantee you that that will not be in his mind tomorrow. He is a doughty competitor and will be back. However, Championship, having just started to close back in at the top of the Championship, that's a big hit, not just for the car, but for the Championship. James Hinchcliffe then uh, is inside the top five ten that's it's got ten and uh, yesterday Shay caught up with the mayor of Hingetown uh, just after his first run in the Mazda MX-5 Cup here at Watkins Glen so Shay you were talking to James yesterday or Friday should I say and uh, he was in pretty yesterday. good form uh, yes yesterday yeah, yeah it was Thursday. yesterday <laughs> Thursday, <laughs> sorry. Friday. It is Friday, yeah. Um, he was in pretty good form, to be honest, wasn't he? Oh, he was had a massive smile on his face. He was so happy to be in this series, said that it had been a long time coming, and it just finally lined up that he could get to play this weekend with no other obligations, and what better place to come out and play than Watkins Glen International? I was talking to my Midweek Motorsport on Wednesday. He's kind enough to call in to our show from here and he said he felt he might have a little bit of a target on his back i suggested they might want to put a target on the car they haven't they've put a maple <laughs> leaf um he's good friends with somebody who's done this before yeah parker kligerman who uh, ran the race at road america last year both of the races qualified well 
didn't have the luck of the draw in the races. Parker actually is a massive fan of this series and sponsors Sam Paley's car with his podcast. So very cool to know that we've got so much involvement from so many other racers all across the world. But Hinch is thrilled to be here. Yeah, uh, Parker and actually a NASCAR driver, Landon Castle. Not that Parker isn't a NASCAR driver. He is as well. Their Money Lap is uh, the name of the podcast and newsletter that they do. Uh, he has had a test uh, with the team. He's with the team who are, have, have won the championship yep. before. He was, it was interesting to hear him talking on Midweek Motorsport about him learning how to draft and be drafted. Yeah, it's a big part of this championship and particularly learning how to drive so close to other cars because in open wheel forms of racing, if you're tucked up under the bumper of the guy ahead of you, that's because you two have just come together and you are at the side of the track somewhere. It's not how you actively drive. So for Hinch, it's a very different experience out there and you've got to feel like he's enjoying every second of it. Had to be a little rule change to get him into the championship actually, didn't there? There did. In the rules it says no gold or platinum drivers and James Hedgecliffe is most definitely a gold driver. He used to be platinum. I think now he's uh, down to gold but it opens the door for other drivers. So what other celebrities could we get participating in this championship? Yeah, It's a, it's a good point. He said this might not be his last outing in IMSA. He almost had a WeatherTech drive for full season. Yep this year last time he was in a mazda was 2017 uh, and he is uh so he is uh he's back under mazda power uh, again he can't score points he could correct. stand on the podium yep. but he can't score points correct yep. he doesn't interfere with the championship at all as far as that's concerned now i don't know 10th position he might walk away with a thousand dollars today <laughs> Mm, not sure he'd want to do that. I'm sure he'd throw that back into the pot. James Hinchcliffe at the moment then sitting in 10th position. Still under the safety car with 23 uh, minutes and 40 seconds or thereabouts still to go. Cleanup continues at turn nine after that nasty looking incident for Gresham Wagner. He was in third. The car has been recovered and our hard working corner workers are making sure that the tyre barrier is uh, going to be okay and still be able to do its job as it clearly did for Gresham Wagner in the number five car. We have to address this point situation because we've mentioned the fact that leading the most points gets you 10 bonus laps. Well, Gresham Wagner had led the most laps up to this point. Now Aaron Johnson has that title firmly in his hand and with 22 and a half minutes to go in this race, unlikely that anyone else will be able to grab it away from him as far as leading more laps to go. But coming into today's race, Aaron Johnson has the championship lead with 18-10 as far as points are concerned. Second place in the championship, not here this weekend. So we are not paying attention to Connor Zilich's points total. Celine Rolon is in third, meaning second, because he came in on 16-30. And fourth, meaning third, was Gresham Wagner, 1460 at the start of today's race. Well, right behind him in 1440 was a tie. Sam Paley, who also has had not a great race, and Jared Thomas, who currently sits in second. Thomas could vault up to third in points today. Come back to why we're moving people up in a moment as Gresham's car is going back to the paddock area. Extensive damage to both sides of those car, that, that car. That is going to be uh, a long night of work. Couple of incidents under review. Uh, Hernan Palermo. And Woody Hyman. Woody Hyman have come together. And also... Grant West and John Chaudwan. Thank you. You're welcome. And so that's keeping our race control team busy at the moment. Just a thought about that, those points you were telling. We've moved everybody up because of a driver who we won't now see, who's had a great start of the season, but we won't yeah. now see till the final round. Connor Zilich, uh, who also participates in the Trans Am Championship, where he has factory backing from a major manufacturer. They said to him, hey, uh, you have three conflicts. You can do all the rest of the races, but these three conflicts, you're coming with us. So Connor Zilich, unable to participate in the full season championship, means that he is essentially forfeiting a shot at a quarter million dollars. 
not a quarter million dollars that you have to spend in a certain place. A quarter million dollars. <laughs> what is it, Chair? A quarter million dollars. And how do you get it? Real folding cash money. Yeah. In a briefcase. No, just kidding. I wish it was. <laughs> It's not deal or no deal, it's it the Ida Mitsu Master MX-5 <laughs> Cup presented by BF Goodridge Tyres. Great to see that the crowds have come in, started coming in yesterday on Thursday evening. It was getting really busy and across the weekend, of course, the Seal and Six Hours of the Glen, one of the great American endurance events with a great history going back through the years. And quite a few of these drivers, including Aaron Johnson, who leads the championship sitting at the front of the field at the moment has Aww. expressed the uh, has expressed in interest in being at the sharp end of the field in IMSA WeatherTech in the coming years. Well, one thing we know, he can deal with traffic, he can deal with pack racing because no one comes out of Ida Mitsu Master MX5 Cup without learning that. Described to me by a good friend of mine back in the UK. Uh, and another good friend of mine here in the US as 1970s or 1980s Formula Ford racing except with fenders, with wings over the cars. You know, John, the last couple of years I've hosted the MX-5 banquet at the end of the year. Jonathan yeah. Applegate, if you get a briefcase, I will open it oh, and reveal it to the winner quality. of the championship this year. <laughs> In crisp $100 bills. It has to be. Yeah. They can be cardboard in between. It doesn't I matter. don't care. But just the reveal, the moment yeah. of deal or no deal. Ta da. <laughs> yes. And you win the championship. You get 10th place. You get $1,000. Yeah. That Excellent. would be fun. I would do that too. Apparently, we've already got a meme for that on the Discord server. Love it. Big community of people following IMSA and all of their events and races, all live, all free. Uh, no subscription required, whether you're here in the States or further afield. I know there'll be a lot of people back in the UK and Europe who are following us along. Like to say hello to everybody at Mazda UK, who are big supporters of this, Owen Mildenhall and the rest of the team. I know that They'll be, will they be finished work by now? Yes, they will just. If not, they may be sitting with a cup of tea before they hit the traffic to go home on a Friday night. Hello to everyone watching in the uh, WeatherTech paddock just across the way, and of course, Michelin Pilot paddock as well. I know you guys were very excited that this was coming in an opportune moment. Hello to Scotty Mack, Will Power, Simon Pagano, all very big fans of this series. I'm sure you guys are tuned in. And just before we go back to green, which will happen this time around, lights are off on the safety car, I want to give a massive shout out. Anthony McIntosh is up in fourth. Yeah. Matthew Dirks is up in fifth. Robert Noah here in seventh, Jeremy Flesher in eighth, and Jonathan Neudorf in ninth. Those are names that are fairly new to the top ten. What we've done with that bad look for Gresham Wagner is closed the field back up. Not that that really needed doing, to be honest, <laughs> because it's never that spread out here at Eda Bit Team Master MX5 Cup. But we've also given the BF Goodrich tyres a bit of a breathing. Matthew Dirks loves his aviation liveries yeah. and that number 76 car for Macumbi Macalea Racing he is the best of the Macumbi Macalea Racing cars, Jean Chaudouin a little bit further down in 16th position and Sam Paley with that incident does have a chance now to fight his way back through if his car is up to it but he's down in 24th position for the blue number 28 so we we'll need to keep an eye uh, for the red 28 yeah. excuse me so we need to keep an eye on that car he all right not finished in 24th john i uh, promise you that totally deep breath restart just under 17 minutes to the checkered flag and the six thousand dollars for the winner down to a thousand dollars for 10th place in this the first of two races this weekend aaron johnson championship leader down into the first corner with a teammate behind him, Jared Thomas, who is maybe playing Tim Teal Colour at the moment. Oh, oh, bit of hip and shoulder there coming through turn one. That was Palermo and Woody Hyman. They're already under review for another incident. They're clearly, Woody has a Hernan magnet with him, and Hernan <laughs> has a Woody magnet uh, with him as the leaders come over the top of the brow of turn four, head down the short shoot towards the inner loop. 
And now we get two echelons of cars, two lines of cars. Here comes the Hickson Motorsport machine. This is a replacement car for Thomas Annunziata. She comes through. We've seen this show before, and Annunziata back to the lead at the exit of the bus stop. That's a rookie leading the whole race. Not just the top rookie, he leads it all. Annunziata from New Jersey. That happened last year in this race, though, John. We got a rookie getting his first ever win in the championship in race number two. Race number one was won by Tyler Gonzalez. And by the way, the other races we've had here at this track in the past, all of those winners not in the race today. We will have a new virtual name on the virtual trophy. Is it going to be Thomas Annunziata <laughs> as he comes back to the lead with a textbook Watkins Glen International Manoeuvre into the inner loop? And that would be a new name for the first time yeah. winning in this championship as well. Not just here. Dirks is still on it. Round the outside at the heel of the boot at turn eight. That is a very brave maneuver. You've got to get a little bit of respect and a little bit of help maybe from the driver that you're going by. So that's, I think, another position made up by Matthew Dirks. He's, there's been a bit of shuffling he and he's back down to seventh now. Definitely had a go on Robert Noacre, yeah. a guy who knows his way around this championship very well. So that's an impressive attempt. As they come to the line, it's all changed from the last time around. And Unziata leads from Thomas. Then Johnson in third. Championship leader doesn't want to be doing anything silly here. Then Celine Roland in the second of the Hickson cars. Behind Celine Roland in the yellow, uh, oh, uh, lime green and orange, should I say. That's Robert Noick, uh, uh, that is uh, Anthony McIntosh, then it's Noick, and then it's Dirks, Fletcher, Neudorf, and Hinch is still in the top ten. It's an impressive move off the restart to be able to keep the elbows out and stay in the top ten because we've seen a lot of changing up and down the charts everywhere else. So for James Hinchcliffe to be holding down tenth, it's a good move. As now Jared Thomas is making good. a move down the inside. We've seen this lap after lap get to the right-hand side early, get the draft going. Through goes Jared Thomas oh. to the lead, and Johnson will follow him through in the blue car as he gets through into second. Big, big wiggle by Newick, but somehow manages to hold on to it. Man, and McIntosh following them through, maintaining that fourth position, but now the order of the three in front of him has all changed. Neuker tries to go around the outside, coming into the laces of the boot. Is he able to hold that position over Dirks, or is Dirks finally going to get the run and get by the number 13 machine? It's a lot of grip down there right now, John. 13 then moving up, Robert Neuker. Good car control from him and from Anthony McIntosh at the inner loop last time around. There's a little bit of a 787B Le Mans winning vibe about that McIntosh colour scheme with the diamond pattern. Those of you with long memories will know that Mazda, still the only manufacturer to win the world's greatest race with a non piston engine with their rotary, the quad rotor 787B. Nobody slept that Le Mans, I'll tell you that. And of course they are bringing rotary back to their road car ranges with the range extending motor in CX30. Jerry Thomas led that lap, cementing the fact that his teammate, Aaron Johnson, will get the 10 bonus points for leading the most laps. So one of our incidents has been reviewed. No action will be taken. That was the one that we mentioned earlier between Woody Hyman and Hernan Palermo. Hernan, Hernan Palermo. Yeah. We've still got eight or ten cars right in this year with 12 <laughs> minutes to go. Typical in a bit to MX5. It is definitely the best way. I think on the last lap, whoever's leading's got to try and get across to the right-hand side coming out of Turn 4. Otherwise, they are just going to get freight trained and everybody follows through. Johnson goes to the lead. The two Hickson team cars trying to follow through. Jared Thomas holding off one of them, but had to give best to Thomas Annunziata. Here's his teammate round the outside. McIntosh on the inside in that bright orange and lime green car. Side by side. Roland down the inside to 
the toe of the boot, uphill, you can get the power on nice and early, crest the rise and set for the heel of the boot. Johnson with a little bit of breathing space. Not much, but it's enough. It's more than a breath. Into the heel of the boot, another downhill. Breaking menu, the breaking spot and the Hicks at 87 of Celine Roland. Snaking as it was being slowed down by Celine Roland. McIntosh on the inside. Then we've got, look, there's the 13 car we said. Robert Neuer was getting a decent run and we're lining up behind the top three. Too wide all the way back then to Robert Neuer and Matthew Dirks in seventh and sixth position. Little touch into the final corner. Roland and McIntosh round the outside. Oh, really, really respectful driving by Celine Roland. He could have run out to the wall there. He pinched his exit and made sure that his competitor had room down into turn one. Big push, big push on the back of the 69 car. McIntosh actually pushed to the lead, literally with a bump. Not just, oh, he's been hit again, he's going off. This is going to be huge. Oh, no. In the uphill, and this carnage. Roland is involved, uh, Jonathan Newdorf is involved as well as full course yellow does now wave. Alex Batura, Jeremy Fletcher. Uh, that's a big one for Newdorf, though. That was such He's a move happy. from McIntosh. The dive down into turn one. His car, though, now very much strewn across the track. As yes, New Jonathan Newdorf is lamenting a lost opportunity. McIntosh got a bump to go down into turn one and held on the it brilliantly, but then was being pushed into turn number three as well, going up through the uphill S's. Jeremy Fletcher's car is somewhat the it. worst for wear. I don't think there's any point in trying to get that back with the right front also involved in that further down through the field. This was the midfield. That's Jeremy Fletcher, the 22. Uh, Night off the 55. And McIntosh in the sixth place as it was, 69. So this goes back to turn one. The yellow and green car gets a big push as he squeezes on the inside of Robert Neuegger. It was Newdorf actually. Uh, Newdorf, excuse push. me. Yeah, give him the push. And then up the hill, oh, he gets hit by Neuegger. He, uh, he gets hit by Neuegger. Matthew Dirks is going to be out of the race as well. And Jeremy Fletcher, we know, took some damage. Take a closer look. So the 13 black and white car on the quarter panel yep. on the right hand side and that's going to be a penalty I think wow. for Robert Neuegger who'd fought his way up through the field. Serious damage to Celine Roland's car as well in the left rear but what avoidance by James Hinchcliffe. Very heads up. He kept the car tucked in on the racing line and managed to avoid all the carnage. So McIntosh did pull across the front of Neuegger. Then he gets in front of Celine Roland. That's all fine coming out of turn one. Into turn two, does he move across? He takes the Maybe line. Maybe he does, but that's the racing line. Good point, Shay. And brilliant driving by Hinch to get through that. He's going to end up in, I reckon, seventh position after all of this. We've got seven and a half minutes to go. We might not get back to green here with the amount of cars that need the cleanup. I think what will be looked at very carefully by the stewards is whether they feel that Anthony McIntosh cut across the front yep. of Robert Neuegger and gave him room. You've got to give room, but I'm not sure there was any overlap there. I don't think there was. A very, very strange situation. Our stewards will look at it. They will make the proper call. And we will back them completely on that because they will have views that we didn't have. But that is a lot of damaged cars. I'm very sad to see that, that so many people who have had very good races. I mean, think about what we've seen from Celine Milan today, fighting for what looked like was going to be his first win of the year. It was almost three wide coming out of turn one. McIntosh in the lime green and orange card. Was there a push even from Roland? as well. There I think was there the was. the exit of the corner, but I don't think there was another one. Is he still being... No. No. No, that was no anger. There was, there was a little bit of, uh, of air, I think. Matthew Dirks in the silver 76 with the Air Force decals. Uh, that 
car is badly damaged with right front suspension. Mm. And amazingly, Celine Roland, battered, bruised Mazda, is still running. Uh, he has dropped down outside the top 10. Hinch is up to sixth, not seventh. Wow. So it's Aaron Johnson from Thomas Anunziata, who's the best of the rookies. JTR from Hickson, from Jared Thomas, JTR, from Robert Noeka Racing, the 13. Uh, that car involved in the accident will be being looked at. Jean Jodouin from Akumbi Makalia Racing, the 39 in fifth. Hinch is wow. in sixth. Jodouin in fifth? Yeah, he's, he picked his way through the carnage there. Whew, hats off to John Jodwan. That is a phenomenal performance. Yep, the, the black, white, and blue door-mirrored car up in the fifth spot. I did see him dart around Hinch when all the carnage was going on. Very opportunistic, but great drive by him. You've got to make it. It's bad enough when there's one car spinning in front of you. And normally, the conventional wisdom is that you head for the car on the understanding that unless it's standing absolutely still, its momentum will have moved it by the time you get there. Now, I've heard a lot of drivers tell me that, and that's that's a tough thing to do, but it almost always works. Almost always <laughs> works. <laughs> Except however, when it doesn't. <laughs> however, yes, when it doesn't, it gets really messy really quickly. However, when multiple cars are spinning, you are making huge decisions in a fraction of a second. Uh, let's hope we don't have the same tomorrow, and it's a Groundhog Day for the oh. for the uh, MX5 runners and the accident. Would you like my coat? Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah. I'm uh, leaving now. John should one. I've just checked it by the way. His best ever finish came at Watkins Glen last year. That was fifth. He's about to tie that in the first race of the weekend. That would be quite an accomplishment. Clean up continues, and. As it stands at the moment, we're not going back to green. There will be this lap and one more, I think. It's still yellow. It's not a white flag being waved yet, although we are behind the safety car. So the lap times that they're recording are three and a half minutes. We might get the opportunity. Oh, no, white flag is out. White flag is out now, yes. Yep. So this will be the last lap. Ah, that's a white flag for a safety vehicle. Oh, uh, yes, you're right. That's a very deceiving white flag you're holding there, Mr. Preston. Yeah. It's, I think we are probably a lap away, maybe three minutes away from getting a finish to this in under green. As the sad sight of the number 55, Hicks and Motorsport, Jonathan Neudorf, uh, machine is onto the flatbed. The rollback crews and track service is doing a splendid job. My worry will be on the state of the protective barriers that they've only just been able to get to when they've moved all the cars. I think that is the last car they've got to move. And I wonder if we might, if we slow up a little bit. Oh, no, it, Matthew Dirks' car is still track side that's why we needed the extra rollback oh I, my little hopeful heart says we could possibly that can get moved there is a cut out there we might just be able to get that car behind the wall unfortunately it didn't tow it needs to be on the back of the flatbed so we see the very lovely safety car in the colours of the RTP24, the prototype that used to compete in IMSA competition. That is the last time that James Hinchcliffe had a master power plant under his right foot. He did run the different livery, though. Yes, he one. did. He, he didn't the get red. to run the cool one. No, he didn't run that livery, correct. He ran the red car. Oh, dear. What a shame for all of these tangled and bent dishevelled cars, Anthony McIntosh for JTR. So JTR, Hickson, McCumbie McAleer, Copeland and Spark Performance, all with long nights. Those are some of the biggest teams that we have here in Idamitsu, Mazda MX-5 Cup. Multiple cars being run by them. There will be spares on site. Mazda Motorsport, 
do a cracking job of making sure that there are uh, plenty of spare parts. So a slightly anticlimactic end to this race. Race control just telling us this is now the last lap as time will expire and we'll come to the line for a chequered flag with the yellow, which means championship leader Aaron Johnson, Shea Adam, will extend his championship lead. First of our drivers into the 2,000-point range with 2170, by my math, assuming that he does get All the unofficial. Points. All unofficial. Very unofficial. <laughs> as long as I'm adding things up, it's very, very unofficial. Um, but he should have 2170. Second place, Celine Roulant, continuing around despite the contact, moved him up a couple of positions and means that by my counting, he should have 1,840 in third will now be Jared Thomas, who comes third across the line, 1740 for him. Fifth will be Sam Paley, all on wow. his own instead of tied, 1640 for him. And then Gresham Wagner, 1520. So he goes from third down to fifth and well out of touch. Through the final corner, the checkered flag is ready to end the first of two races of the Edomitsu Mazda MX-5 Cup presented by BF Goodrich Tyres here at Watkins Glen International. And finishing under yellow after a multi-car incident out of one into two. Aaron Johnson and JTR Motorsports Engineering will take the top step of the podium. Thomas Anunziata in second, the man from New Jersey and Hickson Motorsport will be on the second step of the box. And Jared Thomas, the JT of JTR Motorsports Engineering in third position. Thomas Anunciata, the best of the rookies. Uh, it is Clayton Ketcher uh, who is on third spot of the podium for the rookies and Nate Cicero in second. That's Clayton's best result in the rookie championship. It's his first start. There so you go. Great Hat. showing. I, I was factually correct. You were. <laughs> Great showing for those down the field. Outside the top three, Robert Noyenke comes through the field to fourth across the line. I'm sure that will be being, that incident will be being looked at. Jean Chaudouin picked his way through the incident into fifth. James Hinchcliffe on his Mazda MX-5 debut inside the top ten, which is I know is what he was aiming at in sixth position. Spark Performance Hernan Palermo, the Lama Farmer in seventh position. The top 10 made up by Glenn McGee, who came through the pack for JTR in 8th. 9th, Woody Hyman, and 10th, Max Opalski. But the top step of the podium, and all of the points go to the man who started at the sharp end of the field and converted. Aaron Johnson for JTR Motorsports Engineering stretches his lead in the 2023 Championship. Race two coming up across the weekend. Join Shea Adam and me, John Hindall, for that. Bye-bye.